Drop it. What is going on everybody, my name is Lexman, today I've got another video for you and this time around I'm going to show you not only how a typical going first Crusadia combo core should look like, but also what kind of engines, extenders and tech choices you can splash into to make your Crusadia combo deck works as best as possible. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. So um, right here you can see basically a little core that I've prepared and uh, you can already see I'm maxing out on the Crusadia so I'm playing three of each. and. The only people I've seen who cut like some Crusaders out of the deck are either people who play a huge uh, secondary engine in the deck, like a big rocket engine or whatever, or some other types of engines, uh, and then they need the deck space. Then I guess it's okay, especially because you're going to play different, like maybe even potential different combo starters, so it's kind of debatable. But in most cases, if you're playing a pure Crusadia combo deck, then you will want to max out on all of them. There's no reason at all to cut any of them out. Some people even like to include the fourth Aboria copy right here with reinforcement of the army because she's a warrior monster. Um, and even then, sometimes it is going to happen, even though you're playing 16 Crusadia monsters, and you might even put in some additional extenders too, like 20 extenders or whatever in total. It's still going to happen that you're not going to have like a super good hand, so cutting them out doesn't really make any sense at all. And then since this is a combo variant, and most Crusadia combo variants that you're going to encounter or even play yourself will either mainly focus on the Guard Dragon engine or they will uh, supplement their Guard Dragon engine by other uh, combo engines and com like tech choices. Uh, that's why those three are also pretty important in my opinion and it doesn't also make any sense to not play them if you're playing a combo Guard uh, Crusadia variant. Because those here, uh, those two right here, are basically free extenders. They're level fours. They're dragon monsters, so they also uh, establish the god dragon combos. And the red eye Darkness metal dragon is just a perfect plus one target for the LP from the main deck. So not playing those three in a combo variant of Crusadias is pretty much as useless as not playing the maximum amount of Crusadias. Then we have the Call by the Grave right here, which obviously protects you from hand traps. Now, now that it's at 1, you could technically say, well, I'm just going to cut it and play the maximum amount of Crusadia power. But I personally would actually say you should play maximum amount of the Crusadia powers in addition to the Call by the Grave. Uh, simply because, it, first of all, this can also protect the LP, which the Crusadia power can do. Uh, it can also uh, function in different ways, so like, uh, for example, as an interruption on the opponent's turn. So I personally think Call by the Grave is too powerful not to play it, even if you're playing the maximum amount of Crusadia powers. I would rather cut, like, one copy of the Crusadia power uh, over the Cult by the Grave. And then there's Crusadia Crawler 2. Now of course you don't have to play it, like it's not an absolute must for the combo, but it's provi it provides just way too many advantages because first of all uh, it can search your card, which obviously you have to play the targets for, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, but also it can uh, summon, uh, you can play around Dark Lunar no more with it. If you want to see in more detail how that works, then check out yesterday's video, where I've gone about some of the more convoluted combos, especially protecting yourself against hand traps and other disruptions. Uh, so with Crusadia Power, uh, Crusadia Crawler, actually with Crusadia Power too, but that's not the point. You can play around Dark Ruler no more, it's searchable through Regulex, uh, it can be a monster on board, it searches you another card, so it provides way, way too much advantage to not play it in my opinion, especially if you're playing a, cru a pure Crusadia build. So um, that's why I included this in the must play section basically. Then I have the What Legacy World Crown right here in the side deck as sort of a basically a uh, an optional uh, core option because it can function as a uh, Crusadia monster. It's a World Legacy monster, so it does have some synergies too with the name. And also, uh, it functions the same way as a Crusadia does. You can splash summon into a Link monster zone, so it's not a combo starter. But other than that, it's pretty much exactly a Crusadia monster. Though uh, for the for the exact re for the exact reason that it isn't a combo starter, I wouldn't max out on it. That's why I also didn't put it in here. But um, you can definitely play it at two and, and not regret it for sure. Then in terms of the extra deck monsters, uh, you will need one of the uh, one of each, well I want to say mainline Crusadia extra deck monsters, at least. Uh, because Magius is the combo starter and the main advantage generator basically. Spath has the reason the God Dragon combo works. Regulex searches your spell and trap cards. And then Ecomax is just the boss monster with a negate with the attack pushes. Pretty much being unable, making your opponent unable to beat over it. And then for the God Dragon combo you need the LP and the Skulldread. Which even though you might not like super heavily focus on the Guard Dragon combo, it's still a little too efficient not to do it and then just uh, play a different combo route after the Skull Dread, which is still going to work in most cases. Um, that's why I included it in the must section. And then Link Spider works against or rather uh, helps you recover after a Nibiru in most cases if your hand's good enough. 
And also the triple burst dragon, if you, they uh, impermanent your LP, uh, your Spatha, for example, or if they ash your LP, then uh, you still have a way to play, uh, to keep playing at least up, up to some interruption, like one or two interruptions or an Avermax or whatever. And speaking of Avermax, I have him in this extra deck here. Of course, you don't have to play it because usually when you play a pure Crusadia combo variant, you want to end on an Equimax with a Negate. But uh, if you get interrupted heavily, like with the Nibiru or the uh, Spatha LP, then ending on an Evermax is usually better than ending on purely an Equimax with a Negate, maybe. Um, and if you're doing that, then you will also have to play a second Magius because the Evermax needs monsters that are special summoned from the extra deck. And if you summon like an Equimax and then into the zone of Equimax you summon a Maximus, for example, you won't be able to summon the Evermax without turning the Maximus into a Magius first. So. Uh, playing two Magius uh, is definitely important in those fringe scenarios, which are still going to come up sometimes, of course. Then there's the Parallel Exceed, which is not a must, but it's extremely powerful. It turns into a free rank 4, basically, or just into two free extenders, um, which is extremely strong. And can pretty much, I don't want to say double, but like largely enhance the power of your board. And then Monster Reborn, especially, like... Uh, I'm giving this a specific mention because sometimes when your normal summon gets interrupted or just any of your like Crusadia specific plays get interrupted then you can monster reborn any of your monsters back and then uh, just keep playing so for example if your normal summon gets destroyed or whatever uh, then your plays don't have to stop there immediately though monster reborn is at one as well so uh, it's kind of iffy but uh, if you have the space then definitely go for it and then as I said before the two world legacy targets for the crawler uh, are also monster reborns. Also, World Legacy Guard Dragon can additionally help with the moving monsters in different main monster zones, uh, with the LP, for example. So, uh, those two are pretty good inclusions in the deck as well, though, since they're both uh, hard ones per turns, I don't think you should play more than one of each. But playing both at one and then the Crawler in addition is pretty good usually. And now you're seeing a huge uh, list of cards right here, which I'm going to talk in more detail right now. Uh, those are pretty much all the engines and tech choices and extenders and other card options that have proven themselves very useful and very efficient over time, over like the past two years I want to say, two and a half maybe. And by far the very best combo engine or like the most effective and most powerful combo engine ever used in Crusadia is uh, Gamma Seal Waterfront, which you would have to play one Gamma Seal, three Waterfront, one Terraforming. Sometimes you can even play side rotation additional field spell though this is kind of adding just a brick to your hand which doesn't make your combo like extremely more consistent so it's it's kind of iffy but if you really want to play that additional copy of the field spell then you can go for it uh, but usually three waterfront one terraforming and the gamma seal is enough and then uh, it can if the combo works properly as intended then you can just uh, make three negates uh, well I don't want to say for free but you know it's it's uh, pretty free <laughs> actually so and also gamma seal is pretty much the most powerful negate in the entire game so the next cards I want to talk about is uh, the Cybers package right here, which is the Format Skipper and the Parallel Exceed, which I've mentioned before already, and the Scripton, which uh, turns the Format Skipper pretty much into a one-card combo for Crusadias. Format Skipper can turn into any extra deck monster you, ha you have in your extra deck, so basically it can turn into a Spatha, for example, then be used as ex uh, link material for the Magius, functioning as a Crusadia, and then when it's linked away for a uh, link summon, you can search a Cybers monster to your hand, so searching the Scripton turns it into a one-card combo, or if you have additional extenders in your hand already, you can also search a Parallel Exceed and then just uh, summon two monsters for free uh, on your next Link Summon, which is extremely powerful. And in the same vein, there's an extra deck monster called Trap Tricks, Trap Tricks Reflasia, which uh, when the activation requirements for a Trap Hole normal trap card in your deck are met, you can detach one material from Reflasia and then as a quick effect, send the Trap Hole normal trap card from your deck to the graveyard and then activate that effect basically. And with Gravedigger's Trap Hole, and you can negate as a quick effect with the Reflasia on board, the uh, monster effect activation in the hand of your opponent, meaning if you have the Parallel Exceed in your starting hand, you normal summon any Crusadia, go into Magius, and then summon out two Exceeds, and go into Reflasia, which is going to be your fifth summon at that point. With the Grave Digger's Trap on your deck, you are uh, safe from the Beerus, so your opponent can't do that, uh, but it also can, of course, protect you from any other hand traps, so that's an extremely powerful play. Uh, also, the one for one, which can special summon the Format Skipper from your deck, uh, basically it turns your Crusadia combos not only into your one card combo potentially but also into a one card combo that doesn't require your normal summon though it requires an additional heart from your card from your hand so uh, depending on how good or bad your hand is this might uh, be very helpful or just slightly helpful depending on whether your opponent can interrupt you further or not and then I also have listed the bundle trap here because if you're playing 
uh, the Grave Digger's Trapple Reflasia engine, then you might have uh, you might want to have a second copy of a Trapple card in your deck just so you have something additional uh, on your opponent's turn, or in case you draw any of those. The next engine, which has fallen out of favor pretty badly over the past two years, um, it's like uh, in summer 2019 was the last time I really saw this being played in Crusadias, but it's still very powerful, especially if you're playing the uh, Skull Dread and you don't have to use uh, the uh, special summoning effect on the Gamma Seal, then you can summon the Rescue Cat, activates its effect. And you can not only summon something like the Valerifon, but you can also basically summon just two Leonis, right? Or, I'm not pretty sure, does it have to be with different names? No. Uh, you can basically summon two Leonis with the Rescue Cat, but you can also summon the Leonis and then the Valerifon, and then go into Naturia Beast, which is an infinite spell negate, basically. Uh, so that's pretty insane. You can also use the Rescue Cat as a normal summon, but the problem with that is that if you use this normal summon and then it gets Ashed or whatever, then you're pretty much done for, right? Your turn ends completely there, so I'd rather use this as an additional combo engine uh, to summon off of the Seruja rather than your normal summon but it's still a very potent engine once it uh, successfully comes, combos off. Then we have the Chaos Space which can basically search you the Chaos Dragons, the black and white dragon I've mentioned before but it can also search you the Chaos Valkyria, both of them have been uh, released as far as I know in Toon Chaos and also you can banish Chaos Space from your graveyard to draw a card basically so Chaos Space generates huge amounts of advantage and can also just provide you with free extenders. A Chaos Valkyria is also pretty much a free extender alongside the Chaos, uh, Black and White Dragon. And so uh, many people have been successful with this, especially Charles from Team COG, who I think when the card released, he built a deck with it and then went 8-0 at, at a tournament, uh, which is pretty insane if you ask me. So Chaos Space uh, alongside some of the uh, Chaos Monsters definitely uh, is a force to be reckoned with in Crusadias. And now getting to one of the most popular, alongside the Gamma Seal route basically, uh, the most popular uh, engine to splash into Crusadias is the Rocket Engine or the Dark Dragon Engine, which can consist of a small engine, which is uh, 3 Quick Launch and a Rocket Tracer. Quick Launch being able to special summon out the Rocket Tracer, which is a level 4 tuner, and then you can use it along uh, with, together with a Make Maximus, for example, or a Draco, or whatever, to summon out, for example, the Borlord Savage Dragon, which is an Omni Negate, probably the <laughs> one of the next most powerful Omni Negates next to Gamma Seal. Or you can turn it into a bigger rocket engine, which can not only then uh, function as a separate combo starter or like starting combo, uh, but you can also just uh, use it in between your combos and then uh, summon multiple rocket monsters, maybe even summon multiple level 8 synchros, which is super powerful, or just go for additional link plays and dragon link plays. So basically, Crusadia Dragon Link uh, is a thing too if you play it correctly. Uh, which you would have to play multiple level 4 rocket monsters then, different ones. And also the boot second launch, which is searchable by Striker Dragon right here. And uh, that one only takes a level 4 low dragon monster, which also f uh, is befitting of Crusadia Draco, which is searchable in your entire deck. So there's uh, huge amounts of combo potential here. Boot second launch, being able to special summon out two of your rocket monsters from your hand, up to two. And also, if you really want to uh, like overdo it on the rocket monsters, you can play Dragon Shrine alongside the Absorado Dragon, which you can special summon for free from your hand if you control a rocket monster, or you can, when it's sent to the graveyard, add a rocket monster from your hand to the deck. So basically, if you turn your Draco into a uh, Striker Dragon, search your Boot Sector Launch, and uh, the, with a Dragon Shrine, you send the Absorado Dragon, you can add a rocket monster to your hand, and you have a free extender uh, for free, basically. And um, that's pretty much the rocket engine. If you want to see how the combo works, and you can also again check out the video I made yesterday where I uh, have shown the step-by-step -step combo with the rocket engine splash into it. And then I also have the Noctivision Dragon right here, right here which is not a rocket card, but it can be special summoned out for free from your hand if you control or if you summon a uh, Dark Dragon monster, which even in the Bear Crusadia Guard Dragon combo, you will 100% do all the time because you have the LP. Um, so if you're opening this card, it's pretty insane because at the same time, if you link it away for a link summon, then you can draw an additional card, which is uh, extremely strong. And if you're playing the Rocket Engine, then even more so because all of them are Dark Dragon monsters. So Noctivision Dragon, I want to say even it's almost a must play if you're playing the uh, Rocket Engine. Then there's Omni Dragon Brotar, which personally I don't like too much because you're so, like pretty much losing out on a little bit of an advantage if you're using him. But he is a, an additional uh, or a an alternative target for the uh, LP summon instead of the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. So if you ever need a second one or if you just want to play additional targets and multiple like more dragon heavier combos then definitely Omni Dragon Botar is a card that you shouldn't overlook. And uh, alongside the dragon engines there's also the Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres which takes two dragon monsters and as long as it's in the extra deck monster uh, in the extra monster zone you can as a quick effect 
uh, tribute this card to bounce a card from your opponent, so basically the normal summon for example, which could even stop some uh, some of the more rogue combo decks plays completely. And then uh, when it tributes uh, itself, then you can summon a dragon monster from your deck, but its attack and defense go to zero. Uh, usually you would want to summon something like a Morphic Goliath, which locks your opponent out of extra deck summoning, so even if uh, the, bouncing the normal summon doesn't interrupt your opponent's plays completely or at all, then you can still summon the Goliath and interrupt your opponent from playing extra deck monsters, so uh, in most cases this should still be more than enough, and alongside your huge combo board with the Equimax and stuff, in most cases this would be an OTK. Then some cards I've overlooked over here real quick are the Familiars, which are Renryu, Gigabyte, Inari Fire, and uh, Nefarious Archfiend, Eater of Nefariousness, all level 4 monsters that you can special out for free if you control a Spellcaster monster, and if you remember, the level 1, uh, Link 1 Crusadia monster Magius is a Spellcaster monster, so 100% of the time in your combo you're at least one, you're going to control at least one Spellcaster monster, uh, so having any of these in your opening hand is extremely strong. And especially if you're trying to go for something like Reflasia, where you need level 4 monsters very early in your combo, uh, playing some of these is definitely not wrong. And even more so if you're playing Performage Hat Tricker, which you can special summon up for free if there are two or more monsters on the field. And he's also a level 4 monster at that. So, um, pretty much uh, these five here synergize very well, not only with each other, but also with uh, the Crusadia deck itself. Uh, especially since it's a combo deck, it has a Spellcaster monster of itself. Then uh, these are all pretty much free special summons. Also, since they're all level 4 monsters, pretty much any rank 4 monster that you want to play is uh, befitting of uh, this engine. But especially Dugaris, which uh, among others has the effect that you can uh, detach two materials, skip your next draw phase, and then draw two cards and discard one, uh, which can pretty much help you draw into the waterfront. Uh, because you're drawing four off of the Skull Red, you're drawing five for turn, of course, and then uh, you're drawing an additional two cards, even th though you have to discard one. Which is not too bad of uh, too big of a deal because if you draw the waterfront and then discard like any extender, it doesn't really matter. You're still going to be able to combo off in most cases and then summon out the gamma seal and GG your opponent basically. And then the last card I've overlooked here is also uh, Hornet Drones. Hornet Drones is a Sky Striking card that can special summon a token, which you can turn into Kagari, which in turn can take back the Hornet Drones into your hand, and then you can summon another token since it's not hard one once per turn, and then turn the token into Kagari into any Link 2 monster that takes normal monsters uh, as material. So basically this card alone can give you a Link 2 monster without using your normal summon. You can also combine this with your normal summon. So for example you summon Maximus, activate Hornet Drones and then Kagari into the Magius zone. Taking back the card and then also searching you, uh, an additional Crusadia monster and then keeping up your place. So there's definitely a huge combo potential, potential with this card. Of course it's at 1 and engages banned so you, there's no way to search this card out. But it's still, uh, some people like to play it even though it's uh, very limited only in availability. So the next engine I've met, uh, the next engine I've got here on my list is the Needle Fiber engine, basically with the Plague Spreader Zombie in the main deck. Now uh, the cards I've listed here, Needle Fiber and these four Synchro monsters, alongside the Plague Spreader, uh, are just the cards that are required for the very specific Synchro Needle Fiber combo that I've mentioned in yesterday's video. But if you're planning on using any other uh, Needle Fiber Synchro combo, then you can definitely feel free to do so. Uh, Plague Spreader is just the best uh, tuner target that Needle Fiber has right now. Uh, because it's pretty much as freely summonable as Jet Synchron was before you got banned. So uh, it's definitely the one card to keep in mind when you want to play Needle Fiber combos. Um, if you want to know how this specific combo works, then uh, I would again highly advise you to check out yesterday's video. And then uh, of course if you want to play a different Needle Fiber combo, then ha you have to adjust your engine requirements accordingly. And now we're getting into a little more convoluted uh, like text and combo engines I want to say. Uh, the first one is the Red Eyes Fusion Dragoon Verte Anaconda combo engine where you basically uh, have to play these three bricks in your main deck which you pretty much don't want to draw any of uh, in your opening hand or at all basically because in the end with any two effect monsters you can make better Verte Anaconda which is going to send the Red Eyes Fusion that's going to send the uh, Black, uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon Dark Magician then you can summon out the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon which is one of the most powerful boss monsters in the entire game uh, but it's pretty convoluted to bring out so uh, but it's still sometimes, especially if you get interrupted or whatever, uh, it might be better to just end on a Dragoon than uh, end on like an Equimax with a Negate or anything. So uh, it's definitely also, or, or just you know, slap it on like, on top of your end combo if you've established like four Negates already. Just put an additional Dragoon on, on the end, like why not? And then the next combo, or rather the next end board piece is the uh, Arch Nemesis cards, which is Arch Nemesis Protoss and Eschatos. Uh, in addition with the Nemesis flag, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But uh, they're, they're pretty much board wipes for either specific uh, attributes or types. One of those is types, one of those is attributes. And um, you summon them out by banishing three monsters with different attributes or types. And then 
Uh, you can declare one type or attribute depending on which monster you're using. Uh, destroy all of the monsters with that type or attribute, and until the end of the next turn, neither player can special summon monsters with that type or attribute. So if you know you're playing against like many fire decks, or your best friend has a pure fire deck, a pure rock deck, a pure warrior deck, or whatever, uh, you can choose one of them accordingly, and uh, just by the end of your combo, slap them, uh, slap them on top of your board, activate the effect called Warrior, destroy all warrior monsters on the field, which usually won't do anything against you in a Crusadia combo deck. And then your opponent won't be able to special summon any warrior monsters, same with fire or whatever. Um, Nemesis Flag also has some interesting interactions because first of all, he can, while he's on the field, activate the effect to add one of those to your hand. And also, uh, if you have a monster banished, then you can shuffle that banished monster back and summon Nemesis Flag, special summon Nemesis Flag for free from your hand. So, uh, not only can he be an extender, but he can also search you one of the Arch Nemesis, so you don't have to hope to draw into them. Though you have to draw into one of them eventually, so... Uh, basically playing three of one of them, or maybe both of them even, and then three Nemesis Flag is a pretty solid setup if you really want to play this kind of endboard interaction. Next up are the dangers, and now the most powerful dangers, which are all limited by the way, are Jackalope, Nessie, and Tsuchinoko. The fact that they're all limited kind of makes me think of them as like one three of basically, because they're all extremely powerful and do pretty similar things, being extenders and drawing into additional cards, or just adding each other and special summoning each other from the deck, graveyard, etc. So uh, playing these three is definitely not a bad call. Some people are scared that if you discard like in Maximus or whatever, um, that you might lose on advantage eventually down the road. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that bad. I've never tried it personally, but I'm convinced that it's not going to hurt super bad. Uh, especially because you're drawing into additional cards then later on and uh, searching out other dangers and stuff. So I'm um, pretty sure it's going to, uh, it would work if you tried it. So that's definitely worth keeping in mind. And in terms of dangers, there's also Danger Mothman, whose effect is not as powerful. Uh, because his discarding effect is that uh, you draw a card and then you discard one card. Which, I guess it fixes your hand, but it's still a negative one because you're losing out on the Mothman and you're only drawing one for discarding one. Uh, but it's also a level 4, so that's pretty important to keep in mind. Since Crusadias often need level 4s either for the Synchro 7 plays or for their rank 4 plays. Uh, having a rank 4 danger monster, a uh, level 4 danger monster is uh, pretty neat, I guess. And now as you might have seen the combo portion of, the, of yesterday's tutorial, uh, there's the Cold Breaker combo which uh, pretty much works with any two effect monsters on the board. You can uh, summon out a Link 3 monster, a Link 2 monster, and a main deck monster uh, under a Link 3 or Link 4 monster, depending, depending on how your board looks. And this combo not only allows you to play, go for huge Link plays and extremely insane combo boards, uh, but it also allows you to go into a form of Tumulus Saryuja, which is pretty much the main purpose of Crusadia combo decks ever since, uh, without even using LP, by just including a few more cards, so the Divine Lands and the... Dragoon the Phalanx, as well as the Romulus in the extra deck, as well, uh, in addition to the Draco Masters of the Tenyi, for example, needs a needs to be a Link 3 or Link 4 monster with uh, 3 downward pointing arrows, everything else is not really important. Uh, and then you can perform your standard Crusadia combo with 4 material Saryujas without even using LP. Since the Codebreaker monsters are all dark, and in the end you're going to have 3 of them on the field, you can also go into something like a Rusty Bardiche, and then go for uh, Phantom Knight's place by sending the Cylon Boots, setting something like a Fog Blade, then banishing the Cylon Boots to add something like a Shade Brigadine or another Fog Blade. Shade Brigadine can be a level 4 monster for your Xyz's place, for example, but you can also set or add something like the Rank Up Magic Launch, which uh, can also be pretty useful in some situations depending on what your extra deck looks like, of course. Um, but also the Phantom Knights uh, can establish you something like a Nightmare Griffin, which is a very powerful Bloodgate card, and depending on whether you would like to play that or not, you can uh, set your board up accordingly and then maybe have your Griffin point to your Gamma Seal, which means your Gamma Seal can use this effect. But uh, the opponent's monsters cannot use their effects uh, unless uh, they're normal summoned. So uh, that's a very powerful way of locking your opponent out of playing the game. Then another card that pretty much goes in tandem with the uh, Codebreaker combo, since it requires so many extra deck monsters or just monsters uh, in general, is Pot of Everest. Um, personally, in my opinion, if you play the Codebreaker engine in your Crusadia combo deck, there's no reason not to play Everest because there's just going to be so much free recursion with the extra deck. Like, first of all, two of your Crusadia monsters are even enough, and then the two Virus uh, Berserkers and maybe even the Zero Day or whatever, uh, you're always going to have five free monsters that, can shuffle, uh, that you can shuffle back just like that and then draw two cards. And also it makes you draw two cards, so it's uh, not a bad card at all. Um, but also another interesting interaction that I've thought about while making this video is that you can also, with the Codebreaker combo, summon out a free, pretty much, uh, Unchained Abomination, which one of its effects is that uh, if a card on the field gets destroyed by a card effect, you can uh, target one card and destroy it. And then with the Vanguard combo and the, uh, with the Vanguard and Reclusia combo that I've also talked about yesterday or in one of the earlier videos, 
uh, you can basically tribute a Crusadia monster with Vanguard and then summon out the Reclusia from deck. Reclusia's effects then going to destroy the Vanguard and uh, one card from your opponent. And if you do that while in control in Abomination, you can basically get two pops out of tributing a monster with Vanguard, so that's pretty powerful. And then some of the more standalone cards I want to say is Instant Fusion, which can in tandem with the Millennium Ice Restrict function as an additional piece of hand trap product protection since you just uh, you can just after Master Rule 5 you can just activate Instant Fusion, summon out the Millennium Ice Restrict and leave it be on the side of the board like until you're finished with your combo uh, if your opponent tries to activate any hand trap you can activate Millennium Ice Restrict and just absorb it pretty much any hand trap at least it uh, needs to be in the graveyard so it needs to be something like Ash Blossom, uh, Effect Baylor, uh, Joel and Lockbird I guess something like that then Millennium Ice can uh, absorb it and negate the effect, so that's pretty dope. Then there's a card that Archal Christia has been played like a year and a half ago in Crusadias a lot because you would build your board and like summon the Gamma Seal and maybe another negate, and then by the end of your combo you would use Sir Yuja's, uh effect back when we were able to make two Sir Yuja's, and um, summon out the Christia with Sir Yuja's second, uh, second Sir Yuja's effect to lock your opponent out of special summoning monsters at all. Actually yourself as well, but you would have your, your combo established already, so you don't need any special summons anymore. And so I'm pretty sure if you want it re uh, really badly, uh, you could perform the the Codebreaker combo, summon out something like an Appaloosa or whatever, and then uh, just summon an, a Christia on top uh, just to, uh, to stop your opponent from special summoning. And with 2800 attack, it's pretty hard to beat over as well, so uh, that's still a pretty solid choice, I want to say. Then right here, we have Topologic Trisbena, which is very specific and very niche, but if you're playing against many back row heavy decks, or just if the meta shifts to in, into a more back row heavy uh, scenario, where uh, many control decks are around, then uh, with the way we have uh, a searchable, special summonable monster on the opponent's turn in our deck, which is Crusadia Crawler, you can just, on the end of your combo, summon out a Topologic Trisbena into your extra monster zone, and then on the opponent's turn, once he sets, like, ideally it would be in the end phase because uh, you would summon out the crawler into Trisbena's zone. First of all, you would get a search off of the crawler and then you would banish the crawler in order to banish an any other, like, back row piece on the entire board. And then burning your opponent 500 life points for each of the uh, cards banished by the effect. So if he sets, like, three or four back row cards in the end phase, you just activate crawler, summon it in into Trisbena's zone. It's going to banish all of the back row. Your opponent's going to lose, like, 2,000 life points, 3,000 maybe even. And then, uh, since it's the end phase, you can set any other cards, and you've pretty much won the game. So, uh, against very back row heavy decks or a back row heavy meta, uh, Topologic Shresbena is definitely a card to be uh, kept in mind. And then, the last two engines I pretty much have in mind right here are, uh, first of all, it's an Xyz slash Zodiac engine, which um, any two level 4 monsters equal a Chaka Knight, which can then be overlaid into a Dryden. The Dryden can also uh, function as, an, like, as a standalone piece of interruption uh, or it can just function as, as Xyz material because then you can summon something like Borbo. Borbo can attack directly, which is not going to deal much damage, maybe it's not even going to deal damage at all, um, but because an Xyz monster battled, you can pretty much for free for a, ra a random r rank 4 monster, you, like you could have as well summoned like Dweller or anything, um, but for the same cost of, of an Abyss Dweller you can summon a Sky Thunder which in some fringe scenarios, like for example if you play the Zodiac Whiptail and the Tanky, which is just going to make it more accessible, uh, Whiptail can as a quick effect uh, attach itself to an Xyz monster, then uh, you can in some uh, scenarios even have six materials under the Zeus, basically making him a triple evenly matched on a quick effect, not once per chain or whatever. Um, so that's extremely strong, definitely worth keeping in mind. Also shout out to Siren, uh, he's done that to me once, so I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> Except he wasn't playing Zodiac, I think, but uh, still the point stands uh, right here. And then another interesting thing is, uh, which I've seen by uh, from Charles from Team COG, our all mentor. Uh, he is playing uh, quite a lot of le level three monsters recently, and then something like the Bamboozling Gossip Shadow, which can pretty much n negate quote unquote a monster effect. And also, since some of them are tuners, like the Psychic Wielder, for example, they can also function as additional targets or just uh, monster materials for the uh, Halky Fibrex and just bash some themselves out for free going into level uh, rank 3 Xyz monsters or being additional fodder. Um, also Speed Dry Terror Top which is limited to one copy but it's still very powerful because it can then basically special summon for you a Tak Tomborg um, which is just an extremely powerful combo starter as well and um, with all these cards 
and like some additional cards, maybe hand traps or whatever. Uh, Charles has even showed me how you can pretty much start your entire combo off, uh, as long as you're playing the uh, Hulk Fibrex combo, of course, uh, without even using your Crusadia normal summon. And then even if you would be interrupted or whatever, you would still have your normal summon and ideally you would have like an additional extender. So you can play through those interruptions way easier than before. And then also the emergency teleport as, um, as a way to summon out uh, one of the psychic monsters. So yeah, that's pretty much it, boys. I've talked about pretty much every engine, every extender, every tech option that has uh, ever since I've started looking into Crusadias and even earlier than that, uh, proven itself to be useful. Uh, more or less useful at least, like the Gamma Seal combo rod has pretty much been around forever. Uh, Chaos Base and Chaos Valkyria have been played ever since they've been released. Uh, Rescue Cat is not as powerful anymore because most people try to rely on more consistent uh, combos. So drawing into it off of the Skulldred is not very consistent. Um, but most of them are extremely powerful and very versatile. Uh, it's definitely worth looking into different ones. And also, the other thing you have to keep in mind is that when you're deck building, you have to consider something like, well, for example, uh, for the Gamma Seal, you need the special summon of the uh, Saryuja. And since we're only able to make one Saryuja uh, currently because of the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon Arata, uh, you can't summon uh, Christia and Gamma Seal in the same turn. So when you're deck building, you have to consider these uh, like niche things, which are very important so you don't block yourself from performing the entire combo. Um, but that's pretty much a uh, topic that I'm going to talk about in a, another video, which is going to be tomorrow, basically. So. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for that guys and other than that i hope you enjoyed this video if you didn't leave a thumbs up if you didn't then leave a thumbs down but especially let me know in the comments what you didn't like because i'm always trying to improve my content and especially which i forgot to mention before if you know any other like uh interesting crusadia tech choices or uh combo engines or even combo starters maybe or whatever anything that in your opinion improves the crusadia combo significantly um that i've just overlooked or forgotten or maybe i've never heard of it before then definitely leave it in the comments as well because i'm always uh interested in seeing other people how they built the crusadia Sadia deck and what their experiences are with it. And so that's pretty much concluding the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.